Hi students, welcome to Earth and Environmental Science and Module 6 on Hazards. This is video number 8 and we've shifted now into starting to have a look at volcanic eruptions and the spheres. So in this video, as well as a few of the ones that will follow, we're going to look at some secondary sources. We're going to compare different types of eruptions, both in terms of explosive and effusive uh, volcanoes and their impact on the biosphere and the atmosphere. So hopefully now you already have some idea of how to contrast explosive and effusive volcanoes and what we want you to be able to do is not just describe the impact of each of these eruptions on the atmosphere and the biosphere but hopefully to be able to explain the impact of them as well. So probably the first thing that we need to do is have a look at the Volcano Explosivity Index or VEI. The VEI gives us a little bit of an indication in the same way that we looked at scales to measure or at least compare different types of earthquakes. We also have ways of comparing different types of volcanic explosions. We've looked at some of the main types in which volcanoes can explode and linked the types of explosion to the magma composition. But one of the things you'll find when you start to study volcanic explosions is that a lot of the names for different types of uh, volcanic eruptions have been linked to specific uh, places or specific volcanoes themselves and how they have erupted uh, in the past or perhaps are still erupting today. So Hawaiian obviously is one of these really slow effusive volcanic eruptions and we see that still forming islands in the Hawaiian chain today. Whereas we can go up to the super volcanoes, uh, the Plinians are really the, the big major explosive damaging kind of uh, volcanic eruptions uh, and these are the ones that we can start to get a little bit of a sense and in fact in the next couple of videos we're going to have a look at some of these really big um, volcanic eruptions, ones like Krakatoa, uh, Mount Pinatubo and Tambora. So one of the things that we can do is we can contrast effusive and explosive eruptions. And we've had probably enough of a look at effusive eruptions to kind of get a bit of an idea about that. And I guess there's just one little exception to what we've talked about so far for the picture that you might have already in your mind about effusive eruptions. Generally speaking, it's the explosive eruptions that are going to have the bigger effect on area. Just the mere fact that the amount of energy associated with the ejection of lava and other materials from the crater of the volcano is going to mean it's going to be pushed to a much larger area. And therefore we do find differences in the amount of uh, area that is uh, covered by an explosive eruption in relation to an effusive eruption. Now, there are uh, traps like the Deccan Trap, which is kind of sitting in the, in the background here, uh, or the Siberian Traps, that are a contrast in, this, in terms of area. These traps can occur over in incredibly large areas, and so there's often exceptions to rules. But this rule is, is mostly uh, reasonably well applied uh, in that explosive eruptions do affect larger areas. And of course, there is also the opportunity for explosive eruptions, uh, explosive eruptions to be sideways rather than vertical. Now, a classic uh, volcanic eruption is a vertical one, so it's going to erupt straight up out of the uh, crater. And a lot of those um, classic volcanic eruptions do that. But one of the most famous ones that wasn't vertical was a sideways eruption. Um, and that was what we saw with Mount St. Helens. So there can be some slightly different uh, ways in which the volcanoes can erupt based on the composition of the magma, but also based on where that pressure buildup has been from the volatiles that are in the magma and how they are, or, or when they are actually released. As you saw from the um, VEI, there is a significant variation in intensity as well when we're talking about different types of volcanic eruptions. And as I pointed out, um, some of these are linked to the names of different types of volcanoes that have exploded in the past. And so we've kind of described these types of um, intense volcanic eruptions as being like the Vesuvian or like the Palayan 
uh, or strombolian. So these are the um, different ways in which we can identify the intensity of different types of volcanic eruptions. But what effect are they having on the biosphere? So the biosphere, remember bio, we study biology, we study living things. So the biosphere is that portion of the earth that supports life. Now that can uh, go beyond the surface uh, to into the atmosphere but it also can go under the surface of the earth a little way uh, with a number of different types of organisms being found not on the surface, in the oceans, under the soil, those sorts of things. So there's lots of different places where we can um, ha see how eruptions from volcanoes have had an impact on the biosphere. Once again, the effusive ones seem to be less likely to have a high impact on the biosphere. Their low level of volatiles, their slow, steady uh, creep of lava tend to have a much more limited impact on the biosphere. Obviously, if there is um, lava coming out of a volcano, that's going to be very hot, somewhere between five and 1,500 degrees Celsius. So that heat's going to obviously have a negative impact uh, on any plants, any trees, uh, and of course, any animals that happen to be close enough to the, the flow of lava. Um, but of course, animals usually will have sufficient warning to move out of the way. The trees, of course, if they're in the path, they're going to be consumed by that heat. As I mentioned on the previous slide, there are exceptions to this kind of impact. The large igneous provinces, some of those traps I mentioned in the previous um, slide, are exceptions to this kind of small, low impact um, effects of effusive eruptions. There are a couple of exceptions, as I mentioned, that to this general rule, but it holds pretty well, especially in comparison to explosive eruptions. So when we look at explosive eruptions, we've got lots of different types of potential consequences on the biosphere. We've got the heat related consequences, and that's not just um, lava, hot lava that can be flowing. It can also be pyroclastic material that's being thrown out of the um, volcano. It can be uh, ash, which can be uh, heating up the atmosphere and also the, the air itself can get quite hot. If we've got an outpouring of steam, if there's water, is water is one of the volatiles, then superheated steam can also um, be something that has a heat related consequence. Sometimes ash um, can get quite heavy and obviously it'll fall underneath uh, the influence of gravity and that can result in instant burial of different types of um, biological materials. Again, mostly we're talking about plant material here because it can't get up and get out of the way. Uh, but sometimes these are uh, these explosions happen quickly and without much warning. And obviously that can affect animals even if they are mobile enough to try and run out of the way, they may not be able to get out of the area quickly enough. We've looked a little bit at Lake Nice and the gas poisoning that was a result of gas emissions um, from the release of volatiles that had built up uh, in a magma. We'll also talk more about um, sulfur and the oxides of sulfur that can lead to acidification of clouds and water, uh, and that can create acid rain. And that too can have an impact on the biosphere. There's also short and long-term consequences of atmospheric cooling and atmospheric warming, warming which can also have both short and long-term influences on life. So the problem with these explosive eruptions is they can have a very, very big impact on the biosphere. It's hard to talk about impacts on the biosphere without also talking about impacts on the atmosphere. The two things, um, living things, do exchange materials with the atmosphere, and so it's very difficult to separate one from the other. Um, and the, so therefore, the same kind of discussions that we had for how volcanic eruptions affect the biosphere also apply to our discussions of how they might affect the atmosphere. Specifically, what we might be looking at is air masses and climate, and we'll discuss changes in the climate in the next video. Um, but once again, effusive eruptions don't tend to have quite the same impact on the atmosphere as explosive ones do. Once again, if they are a larger scale, such as the, the LIPs, or long term, so there's, there's eruptions happening over very long periods of time, then these can be exceptions to the rule. But generally speaking, uh, effusive eruptions 
are also low impact on the atmosphere. This is not, again, the case for explosive eruptions, and we get heat, we get a lot of volatiles, carbon dioxide and water. Uh, the oxides of sulfur, particularly as, as sulfur is interacting with oxygen in the atmosphere, can form sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide. When they combine with water, they form that very strong uh, sulfuric acid, and that can create some massive problems in the atmosphere. And this is not just in the air of the atmosphere that we breathe, which is the uh, troposphere, uh, troposphere, but it's also in the layer above, the stratosphere. And when that happens, we can get some reflective effects. And so you, we actually see some, um, some changes between some of the short-term global cooling effects. So, so that extra material that... Um, that's basically micro droplets that are forming in the stratosphere are, can actually have a reflective effect on the incoming solar radiation and actually cool uh, the Earth temporarily. But often what happens is that, that eventually um, they will fall back to Earth and we will often have a period of global warming associated with some um, of these explosive eruptions as well. The type of eruption, the nature of the eruption, the location, the um, amount of time over which the eruption occurs, all of these are factors that can uh, critically affect exactly what level of impact that we have in the atmosphere. But again, we're not just talking about some of these gases that are, have been important uh, as far as global warming is concerned, but we're also talking about particulate matter. Ash sitting in the atmosphere can make the uh, air very difficult to breathe. Heat can also have the same problem in terms of burning the respiratory systems of um, organisms that need oxygen in order to survive. So there's a lot of potential um, impacts on the atmosphere as a result of explosive eruptions. One thing that we're gonna have a look at in class is the Global Volcanism Project. And it's basically a website that's set up to track all of the current volcanic eruptions, everything that's actually erupting right now in real time. It gives um, some pictures or videos. It's historical as well. It contains a lot of information on historical eruptions, really going back a long, uh, thousands of years um, to try and build a little picture of the um, regularity, the occurrence, the frequency, the distribution of different types of volcanoes around the world and the proportions of those that are currently active. So we're going to have a little bit of a look at those in class to see what sort of things are actually going on in the world around us right now. Thanks for watching.